Once quiet corners of the Great Basin are bristling with activity. Miners have responded to man's appetite for metals with new, more affordable techniques to mine low-grade ore deposits. The results are jobs, less dependence on foreign sources, and new challenges for miners and land managers. With open pit mining comes major land disturbance, and while mining is important, so is reclamation of public lands for watersheds, wildlife habitat, livestock grazing, timber production, recreation, and other values. Reclamation and restoring vegetation in arid climates is extremely difficult. Many attempts have failed, especially where annual precipitation is less than 10 inches. During the 1980s, Region 4 of the Forest Service decided it was time to take action. They formed a partnership with industry and research scientists to come up with some answers. Echo Bay Minerals, the Toyabe National Forest, and the Intermountain Research Station of the U.S. Forest Service formed a team to conduct a detailed scientific study. Treatments and practices were described and designed so the results could be applied at similar mine sites in the Great Basin. Echo Bay's Borealis Mine near Hawthorne in western Nevada was selected as an excellent example of arid land mining disturbance. Situated at 7,200 feet elevation in the Pinion Juniper Vegetation Zone, precipitation is scarce, averaging 8 to 10 inches annually. A summary of the variables that we're concerned with here include uh, identification of adapted plant species, uh, identification of levels of fertilizer required to support those plant species in this soil, uh, identifying ways of incorporating mulch or organic matter into the spoil material to conserve moisture and uh, hold uh, or maintain levels of, of fertility. And then another thing that we're concerned with is the degree of slope angle uh, that we're faced with on these dumps. Echo Bay Mineral Company built a 1.2 acre overburden mini dump for the study at its Borealis site. The top was leveled and four sides graded according to specifications. The slope exposures faced northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. In, in the background here, you see an angle of repose slope, which is a very steep slope, which the material has been just pushed over the side of the hill with a cat and allowed to fall at its natural angle. It's a, it's a very, very steep slope. It's difficult to revegetate and it has the highest susceptibility for erosion. We're contrasting that with a much more gentle slope here, which is a, a three to one slope, which is three units of, of horizontal run to one unit of vertical rise, and an intermediate slope on the other side of this hill, which is a two to one slope, two units of horizontal run to one unit of vertical rise. The idea here is that on the on the gentler slopes, the susceptibility to erosion is much less than on the steeper slopes. Scientists installed a climatic station to monitor precipitation, air and soil temperature, wind and solar radiation. Meanwhile, researchers from the Forestry Science Lab in Logan, Utah, were studying the seed germination and physiology of native plants from the mine vicinity. Soil analyses determined soil characteristics, nutrient deficiencies, and confirm the absence of chemical toxicities. Experience has shown that fall is the best time of the year to plant in the Intermountain area. By the fall, everything was ready. Strips of topsoil, eight inches deep, alternated with strips of mine spoil. The selected seed mixture, made up of various grasses, forbs, and shrubs, was broadcast over the area at a rate of 60 pounds per acre. An even application of nitrogen followed, at a rate of 80 pounds per acre. To minimize seed loss from wind, birds, and other animals, seed and fertilizer were firmed into place with a brilliant cedar packer. This technique also ensures that soil and fertilizer are in close proximity to seeds. To test the effects of straw mulching, straw was blown onto appropriate test plots with a straw blower at a rate of two tons per acre. The straw was then crimped into the soil to minimize loss from wind. 
Erosion from mine dump slopes has long been a concern. To study effects of the various test treatments on erosion, scientists installed 15 erosion study plots. By October of that year, installation was complete. The seed's dormancy requirements would be satisfied that winter, so come spring, the seeds would be ready for germination and growth. When scientists revisited the site that spring in April of 1988, they observed more moisture trapped on soil surfaces where crimped straw mulch had been applied. Mulch was playing a significant role in providing moisture during the critical periods of germination and seed emergence. Later that spring, weeds common the first year or two at most reclamation sites were observed. In the Great Basin, Russian thistle and halogeton are the most common species. Though weeds are often a concern to reclamationists, they represent an aggressive natural force that probably shouldn't be tampered with. In fact, weeds contribute to the development of soil by adding organic matter and mulch. There's also direct evidence that Russian thistle and halogeton, both common in the Great Basin, excrete oxalic acid, which increases the availability of phosphorus to other plants. After three years, the site began to look more and more like the natural surroundings. Ten of the original 16 species planted had become successfully established. They make up the family of plants, grasses, and shrubs recommended for dry site reclamation in the Great Basin. Within three to five years, the planted species had outcompeted the annual weeds. In most cases, the annuals were hard to even find. Shrubs had established a major influence on the surface architecture of the site and were creating favorable microclimatic ants. There, other plants and life forms would have the opportunity to become established. The shrubs also provide shade and affect the distribution of rain and snow, further altering the local environmental conditions. Annual assessments at the site clearly show topsoil and mulching result in better plant cover, density, and biomass productivity than unmulched or mine spoil only plots. Annual soil moisture samples have shown topsoil retaining higher levels of moisture than mine spoil. However, the effect of mulch on soil moisture was very short-lived. Mulch contributed to moisture retention for less than one year where topsoil has been effective for over five years so far. Plants growing in topsoiled and mulched plots are maintaining higher levels of tissue water and higher rates of transpiration. Soil samples have been collected annually to test the effective life of the originally applied fertilizer and to check plant nutrient cycling. Year five is still too soon to be definitive, but so far it appears nutrient levels are maintaining themselves by natural turnover of tissues in the vegetation. Difference in plant success on slopes with a steepness of two to one versus three to one was much less significant than expected after five years. Vegetation cover and biomass were more dramatically affected by slope exposures. On southwest and northwest facing slopes, plant development was very poor compared to the dump top. On northeast and southeast slopes, cover appears to be on par with the most prolific test plots. Erosion plot research has shown significant soil ravel and sediment movement down the slopes. Summer thunderstorms can move significant amounts of soil material unless it's protected by plant or rock cover. If it's not possible to establish a plant cover, a rock pavement might be necessary to control erosion. However, it's clear that a plant cover is preferred for its superior erosion control, water infiltration, wildlife habitat, and aesthetic values. Seasonal variations in climate and weather patterns will determine the long-term character and success of reclamation in the Great Basin. 
Wet springs and early summers will favor grasses and forbs. Hot, dry seasons will favor the deeper-rooted, more hardy shrubs. In summary, steep slopes should be avoided. Shaped and contoured mine dumps contribute to more successful reclamation. Research also shows topsoil, mulching, fertilizer, and seeding are important for successful reclamation, with seed mixtures derived from adapted plant life forms. It's clear that with careful attention to detail, proper timing, application of proper techniques, and a little luck, reclamation of arid land mine spoils can be highly successful. Perhaps most important, this study demonstrates that when industry, land managers, and research scientists work together, they can realize far more important achievements than when working alone. A detailed report summarizing the reclamation techniques developed on the Borealis mine is available from the Regional Forest Service office in Ogden or the Intermountain Research Station in Logan, Utah.